All right, I've covered Roundup and glyphosate quite a bit on my page. One of the biggest mistakes is people confusing occupational exposure with dietary exposure, which is exactly what she's doing. As a registered nurse, I would hope she'd be actually reading the studies versus just reading a news article. So not only does this 41% cancer increase have absolutely nothing to do with dietary exposure, this isn't necessarily true regarding occupational exposure either. To date, every regulatory agency that has evaluated glyphosate has concluded that it's safe if used according to label specifications. The global consensus is summed up by Health Canada when they say that no pesticide regulatory authority in the world current, currently considers glyphosate to be a cancer risk to humans at the levels at which humans are currently exposed. And this is particularly true for glyphosate residues on foods. And again, we have to remember we can't confuse dietary exposure with occupational exposure. Those are two very different things. So let's go back to that 41% cancer risk increase meta-analysis. All right, so Gideon wrote an excellent analysis of the study and includes some of the other evidence that we have on glyphosate. I'll take him on this post as well. So one of the largest studies that was done on glyphosate and occupational exposure followed 55,000 people uh, that were exposed to high levels of glyphosate. This was the agricultural health study. And it showed fairly conclusively that there is no reason to think that glyphosate has any relationship with most cancer at all. So back to that meta-analysis where they concluded a 41% cancer increase, well, there were a lot of issues with that meta-analysis. One being the large range of observational studies that combined the results into one statistical analysis. And remember, this was only apparent in people who had been exposed to very high levels of glyphosate for long periods of time. Again, not dietary exposure. And even within occupational exposure, dose still matters in that regard as well. We also don't know if these people were just simply unhealthy in other ways as well. And let's just even say those results are correct. I've done a few posts on absolute risk versus relative risk, and the increased risk in absolute terms would only be about 0.5% obviously much lower than the 41% that was in the headlines. And to reiterate this one more time, it was for people who have been exposed to very high levels of glyphosate, often for decades. This is very different to the tiny exposure that most people would get from eating fruit and vegetables grown using glyphosate. Please read the rest of this. I will link it in the comments. And recently was this meta-analysis of glyphosate and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in an independent critical scientific review with six senior scientists expressed low confidence in a potential causal relationship between glyphosate exposure and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is one of the most comprehensive analyses of the existing research on this topic to date. Of course, I know my comments are going to be filled with people calling me a Monsanto shell. I really don't care about the sales of glyphosate. What I care about is people understanding that their food is safe and not to be afraid of safe foods.